Hi, this is Don Mays, and this is a series of YouTube videos that will show you how to use some of the tougher functions within the Boyum uh, package. So without further ado, let's kind of go into it. My objective in this is to use real business examples of all the Boyum functionality and then to give you real life examples so of this. And we're going to tackle some of the tougher ones. So if you want to just do messages and things like that, um, I won't be doing any of those things, but I'll be doing line loops and while loops and um, uh, a bunch of other such things that are more difficult to understand and more difficult to put into practice. So I will be fully explaining all the volume B1 functions in related to my examples and the, they will be real world business examples. And then I'll also be working with B1 print and delivery to show you some of the options that are available using it. All of these examples will be also published on my website, www.macedon.com, and they'll be available for download uh, at no cost. Our first in our series is we're going to go in and show you how to go and use a SQL query to go and select uh, records to process. Our example is going to be a, a, a selecting a group of customers and setting a flag in the uh, business partner master file properties to indicate which ones we've selected. And then after that, you can use it for the property setting for whatever reporting or um, further processing that you may want to do. So in order to make this work, we're going to go in and, and set up a query. And we're going to take the query, and it's going to have a, a user inputted uh, variable, which is going to go and say, do you want to process this customer or you don't want to process this customer? Uh, and that's going to be a checkbox. And then once we have made our selections, we're going to go through and say, here is how we process them after we hit the close button on the on the query itself. And we will use then a line loop to go and actually update and process the records. So Here is the business partner uh, master file. And I've got a flag on here that says, let's flag business partners. And in this case, I'm only going to be flagging customers. If I look at the button, how did I create this button? Uh, we'll go through a simple example of how I did that. I went to the item placement tool. And in the item placement tool, I defined a description called flag VPs, which is what you see here. And then I've got a item UID, which is a sales flag. And I say, place that to the right of uh, field number two. And field number two, if you look down here in the bottom left corner, is the cancel button. And I'm offsetting that by 10 spaces to give a little bit of space in between here. And then I'm saying, what type is it? It's going to be a button. OK. And then when is this button active? I'm saying it can be active anytime. Add, OK, fine. Um, and there's no password protection or anything like that. So this is a fairly simple one. So I've defined this button. The button shows up. When I click on this button, it's going to run a B1 validation. And this is the validation that's going to run. There's no checks on it. It only runs on all four modes. And it runs with no checks, no SQL condition, nothing. So it's going to run a macro called SP01. SP01 is going to provide some prompts. And it'll give us three options. Uh, flag the business partners, which is what we're going to show here. Reset flags, which is not what we're going to show. We'll show that in a future uh, presentation. And then just show flag. So these are running universal functions SP2, 7, and 6. So let's just go to SP02. We've made our selection is flag BPs. We're going to SP02. 
I will just go here and go to the next um, one. This is a query. So you understand how to use these down in here. Basically, these are a wizard to go in and set up uh, fields. And all I'm doing is asking a couple questions of the query. I'm saying, this, should this process all customers? I could do it by customer group. I could do it you know, by any uh, selection criteria I wanted, but I, I'm just asking all customers, yes or no. And then I want to uh, omit business partners that have special prices on file. Um, I don't have to have any questions if I don't want, and then it would uh, show all of the customers. Then within here, I've got a SQL query that does nothing more than, let's say that I selected all, it says select yes is selected, customer, customer name, and it checks to make sure that it's a customer, and uh, make sure that uh, I have a valid uh, customer, it's an active customer. So this is fairly simple setup. I've also done something with this wizard over here that basically says my first field is editable and it's a checkbox. So what does that mean when we actually look at it and see what it's going to do when it does that kind of a, a function? I'm going to flag BPs. I'm going to flag these. I'm going to say no for this and no for that. And then I'm going to have a query that shows up and you can see that check edit on field one makes it a checkbox and now I can go in and I can do I can check three four five or as many as I wanted to if I had answered the word uh, select all yes then all of these would have been automatically selected then I could deselect some the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go I made my selection three four five items I want to then go in and close this. When I close this, it's going to run a B1 validation. And this validation, again, it always executes. It does SP05, okay, and, but, and it's on form mode all because this is essentially just a close button that's available to me. Uh, and when I run SP05, let's see what it does. So this is a line loop associated with this screen back in here. Okay, so if I look at it from a viewpoint of what I'm seeing, it's select the case when volume one is selected, and this is field volume one. Okay, if it's yes, then we click on uh, and we run the process called update BP. Okay. If, we know, if it isn't, so in this case, we got one, two, three, four that are selected. And we hit the close button, and then we're going to run this function, SP03. Let's look and see what SP03 is. And SP03 goes out and it activates 2561, which is the customer form. Uh, and then it doesn't activate, then it transfers the selected customer, C20,000 is an example, over to field 50, which is the customer code, clicks the find button, clicks the properties tab, uh, sets the uh, property 136.20, that's 64, which is property 64, to yes, clicks the update button, closes the form, okay? This is in a, a line loop, so essentially it'll do that for 20,000, 32,000, 34,000, 40,000, etc. As many as ones are selected back in here. It also goes in and sets a final result value of one, which basically just gives me a clue that there was at least one selected in here. So I could have looking for this, and I could say if I don't find a result, okay, Execute if a condition is met, I could go in and say ex only execute this function if this result value has something in it. After it gets all done with all of the uh, line, line loops going through here and going through uh, four customers in this particular instance, the last step is I'm going to go is I'm going to run another function in here 
And this is essentially a cleanup. It basically closes, uh, activates the current field that I was on, which was a business partner master file, closes the query, and then it runs SP06, which is showing a list of all the ones that are selected, which is nothing more than a query that basically says show all of them with query group uh, 64 said to yes. And that's, in essence, the whole process that's there for selecting the customer. So if we watch what happens when I go in and click close, Okay, you can watch it do the four transactions. Obviously, if you had, you know, 500 that you're going to do, that might take a little bit of time. But this is a quick and easy way to go in and um, set flags within a business partner. You could do the same kind of a thing within an item master. You could do it for vendors. You could do it for um, open sales orders and, and update uh, um, a field to activate uh, or approve sales orders, as an example. Anything like that you can use and mechanize the process. Okay, so that uh, particular uh, volume functionality to go just in select records based on a query and showing how to use a line loop in, in, against a query uh, and how to update records uh, within a business partner or could be item master, could be any number of different tables. It is available as a Word document, and uh, we also have uh, the volume functions that all the item placement tool, the universal functions, the validations, all of those are also exported from volume and are available in XML format as well. Uh, you can send an email to me to get the information, or you can just access our website and you could download it. Thank you very much for watching this video. And I look forward to working with you in the next video that we're putting together. Thank you.